Good evening, good evening, and good evening. This is Dr. Garrett, and I trust you are having a wonderful day. For our Sabbath observers, I want to say happy Sabbath to you and your family, and I trust, I trust, I trust you will have a marvelous Sabbath, a day to reflect, remember all the good things the Lord has done for you, at his creative work and his redemptive work. If you go to Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 to 3, it tells you the Sabbath relates to three specific blessings. Three specific blessings or three specific things. Number one, the Sabbath is a day of rest. You rest from all worldliness and you rekindle your relationship with your family, your relationship with the Lord. Secondly, is a day that is set apart for special use. This is the word sanctification, or means holy, set aside from any other, other day for specific usage. And number three, the Sabbath is a day of blessing. Wherever the Lord blesses, it lasts forever. So for our Sabbath observer, it's a day to reflect and a day to rekindle your relationship with your family and the Lord. For the rest of the per people who joined in this um, session this evening or who's watching this session, happy Friday evening to you and your family. Uh, I pray that you get home safely. I pray that you have a marvelous weekend and you can just relax. Um, you earn it. Put a candle light, get some nice soft music and just spend some good time with your loved ones you know, um, this evening and reflect came from in a relationship where you are today and where you're going. One of the questions that always come up to me in counseling is the value of people. What makes a man valuable and what makes a woman valuable? But before I start, let me just introduce, reintroduce myself. My name is Dr. Garrett and welcome to my YouTube channel. I want to also take time to pause to for all my subscribers and also for my new subscribers. Uh, as of today, I have 136 subscribers and this is my 138th or 39th video. I just wanna lift you up and give you the praise for um, taking time to watch these videos. I hope these videos are invigorating for you. It stimulates your uh, self, it gives you an opportunity to think. I always tell folks, Please write down specific things that you have learned, test them out, do your own research to see if there's any truth in it, right? Just because I'm speaking and I have a YouTube channel, you don't want to believe everything I'll say. Take time to research it for yourself. We depend on others to do the work that is required for us to do. It's the same thing when I'm preaching in a church. I am an ordained elder with the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and I always tell uh, my congregation, please write down, do not believe anything I'm saying, but be a Berean in the book of Acts. The Bereans are known to study daily. They write down the name who is speaking. Um, a modern day Berean, if the Bereans was here today, they on every Sabbath, um, during church services, they would write down the name of the pastor or the elders who is speaking. And write down the name of the sermon and the text and they'll go home and do the research themselves to see if any truth in it then they act in it they walk in it like jesus says we need to walk we need to think like him and walk like him so i just want to lift up all my all my subscribers for um supporting this this youtube channel and remember as i say always consider a theme that you have learned from the session, write it down in your journal, and and now you are tasked with how you're going to walk in it. So, what is your outcome for 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 subscribing to this YouTube channel? What is your takeaway from watching every video? Write down a vote, a word in your journal um, that describes the particular video that you was watching. Then you add on to it. You make it your own. You remix it like a song. Then you live in it. You always want to be prepared to share this knowledge with others. One of my favorite texts is in 1 Peter 3.15. It 
and it says, but sanctify the Lord God in your heart and be ready at all times to give an answer of anyone that asks it of the hope in you with meekness and fear. So once again, the title of this discourse this evening is what makes a man morally upright? What makes a woman morally upright? Or what is the value of a man and what is the value of the woman? Now, ironically, men and women look at things differently. There's a book called Men from Mars, Women Are From Venus. Men and women look, think things differently. And in a relationship, one of the difficulties that happen is the man is unable to understand the woman's point of view. The woman is, un is unable to understand the man's point of view. But I have learned most modern men and women who are not spiritual, this is their concept of what makes a person um, morally astute. You may agree with me or you may not agree, may not agree with me. But what I have learned that most modern men requires five things that, that make a woman morally upright, right? Number one, she has to be friendly. Number two, she has to be fit. Number three, she has to be feminine. Number four, she has to cooperate with his brand. And number five, she has to be submissive. Men, modern men require these five characteristics to determine in their eyes if a woman is morally astute. Woman point of view, the man has to be, has must have a bank account and he must be um, handsome or he must be, um, what else, let me write this down, handsome and he must have bedroom knowledge, right? Men and women look at things differently, right? Women look at the bank account, women look at um, bedroom um, knowledge or, or, you know, sex or so forth. They look at things differently. But what does the Bible say about it? I'm going to go to Isaiah verse 8 and 20 because I love about the Bible is that the Bibles give us the answer um, that needs to be common. Like most people, they take the Bible and they hear it, um, they understand it, but they don't put it in practice. So according to the Bible, what makes men and women equally morally astute. I'm reading from um, the, New, the King James from Isaiah 8 20. It says to the Lord and to the testimony if they speak not according to this word it is because there is no light in them. Now let's break this down. To the Lord. I'm talking about the Ten Commandments. If you look at my previous videos the Ten Commandments have to do with the four areas of life. First three commandments your psychological welfare. The fourth commandment, which is the Sabbath, which starts with the word remember. It's ironic that it starts with the word remember because the Lord knew that we was going to forget it. Systematically over the years, um, the, um, the Sabbath has been done away with. Now people worship on other days, but that's a whole different video. I'll discuss that in um, a later on video. The fifth commandment has to do with your, sec your physical welfare and and the sixth to the tenth has to do with your social welfare. These are the four areas of life. So it says here, to the Lord, that's the Ten Commandments. And to the testimony, the testimony is the life of Jesus, right? Jesus came here to show us how can we, how can we be obedient to every spoken word that come out of God's mouth. Remember when he Bible Satan, Matthew 4, 4, he said, man cannot live by bread alone but by every spoken word out of the mouth of God. So if God said it, we need to obey it. You know, the highest form of praise to God is obedience. If you obey God, there's many blessings that come with it. So to the Lord, Ten Commandments, to the testimony of Jesus' life, if they speak not according to this word, that is Bible, basic instructions before leaving earth. Now check this out. It, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. So it's those three things, right? If you're not speaking to the Lord, and if you're not practicing the Lord in your thinking and in your movement, right? There's no light in you. If you don't have the testimony of Jesus, there's no light in you. And if you're not following the Bible, there is no light in you. So the, I love the Bible. The Bible gives us specific answers to everyday life experiences, right? There is some light 
to how we think and how we act, but there is greater light when we look for our answers in the Bible. The Bible is not about confusion, not about um, men being women, women being men. It's about specific order in the family, which is this way. It's Christ, the umbrella, man underneath, woman under, um, let me slow down, is Christ, the husband, the wife, then his children, family. And that's the order it should be in the family. There is one priest in the home and that's the husband, right? He is the protector, he is the provider, all right? This is what men do. Women are the nurturer. It should be a complimentary bowls that is done to support and build a foundation inside the home. Now this, according to the Bible, this is how you have light. As men, we need to understand our roles in the home. Women need to understand their roles. Let me be more specific. Husbands need to know their roles in the home. Wives need to know their husbands, their roles in the home. And each one to know how the other's thinking. It has to be complementary and um, complementary roles inside of the home. I can't think about the other world word I was thinking about. But the enemy's whole plan is to destroy and deceive. Deceive and destroy. And how he does that? By three ways. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. You know, the enemy is trying to tell us how we should think and how should we react, which is contrary to biblical knowledge. So we have to understand, if you want more light, you have to keep the commandments. If you want more light, you have to have Jesus' life. If you want more light, you have to follow biblical principles, right? Jesus says specifically, he says specifically in John chapter 14, verse 15, 16, if 15, 16, John chapter 14, verse 15 and 16, if you love me, keep my commandments and I will give you another helper, another helper. That means that if you look at Jesus as your helper, then you should be walking how he walked. You should be talking how he walked. You should be concerned about the welfare of other people. And most importantly, to know your role in the house and out of the house. A home, a call to be a small piece of heaven. But, and I've been doing this job for so many years, so many years, and not every home has order, right? Your home is a byproduct of what's going on inside of you. And there's a battle in every one. It's every one of us. It's called great controversy. The battle between good and evil. Paul says this so dramatic in Acts chapter 6 and also chapter 7. The things I do, I shouldn't do. And the things I shouldn't do is what I do. There's a battle between the flesh and the spirit in every person. The flesh always make excuses. Oh, I don't feel like doing this. Oh, I'm too tired. Um, always make excuses and always deflecting. The spirit is always willing. So we have to say to ourselves, which one are we going to feed? Because if you feed one, you have to starve the other. Right? Most people are right in the fence. You have to give Jesus your whole entire being in order to have light with you. Because when you have light in you, you're walking taller, you're thinking higher. You know exactly what your role is and you have controlled emotions. It's so important for us to be in control of everything that we do. Jesus came here to show us the way. So the question is, how can we be morally astute? We can't do it by our own accord. Zechariah 4, 6, not by my might or my power, but by God's spirit. God's spirit, we can accomplish everything. And, I'm, and it's high time that we stand up and we do the things that we are required to do to be in control of ourselves, to be in control of our emotions, and most importantly, teach our young people that being morally astute is following biblical principles. So once again, Isaiah 8.20, to the Lord, Ten Commandments, and to the testimony, Jesus' life. If they speak not according to this word, Bible, it is because there is no light in them. How can, you know, Jesus cannot say it any plainer than that, right? So if you want to be more astute, follow biblical principles. And I suggest you, you need to look for a church that follows biblical principles. 
They don't follow their own custom. They don't make their own laws, but they follow biblical principles. Now, let me hit you off with this one text. I love this text. I am going to Matthew, right? And I'll find it real quickly. Matthew, um, praise God. Matthew, Matthew, Matthew. I'm reading from Matthew chapter 10, right? Verse 35. And verse 35, I'll read 35 to 37. Matthew chapter 10, verse 35 to 37. And I'm reading from the King James Version. Look what Jesus says. Think I not, I'll start from 34. Think not that I come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And the man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his course and follow after me is not worthy of me. So what Jesus is saying here is that he didn't come here to send, to, um, to send peace, right? What he came here is to break down boundaries of discord that is separating his people, right? Um, you have to look at my video about the CERT, and CERT stands for um, Culture, Experience, Reasoning, and Traditions, right? Now, let me break this down to you. Hold on to your gospel seatbelts because I'm going to take you for a ride. Men are responsible for principles, discipline, order, perseverance, and endurance. Women are responsible of passing on cultural um, themes from one generation to, to another. It's so important for, for each person to recognize um, the strong, the generational curses that's in your family tree. So you, when you come together, you can decide what you're going to move in and what you're going to leave behind. Right? So Jesus is saying this. Your tradition, your culture... Um, your reasoning, right, and your experience has a lot of has a lot of holes in it. They are not worthy. They have no light in them. You need to sober up and understand. You have to leave this behind, and you have to march forward in truth. When they have light, you have to follow this, and you have to follow this basic instructions before leaving the earth wholeheartedly. So you can have order. You can have discipline. You can be morally astute. And you can walk taller and think higher. Jesus is the greatest counselor, greatest counselor that ever walked the earth. Right now, why don't we listen to him? Why don't we follow him? If we follow him, we follow him from a distance. We need to be like John the Baptist, who always had his head on Jesus' shoulder. Many people follow him from a distance because they want to stay who they are. The closer you get to Jesus, the, realize, the more you realize you need to change your ways. And we all need to change your ways. I'm not here to tell you I am perfect. But I'm here to tell you I'd rather walk with him than walk how I used to walk. The greatest high or the greatest joy I ever had was taking a biblical text, digesting it, and, and walking in it. And it brought clarity in my life, in my professional and my personal endeavors, right? So I want to give you another text. Um, this is one of my favorite texts. I think I said it earlier, but I just want to read it again. Um, it is taken from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. 1 Peter chapter 3, 15, and it says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you, meekness and with fear, right? And I leave you with an, uh, another text. This is taken from Isaiah. That's Old Testament. Isaiah chapter 50, 50, verse 4. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4. And it says this. This is one of my favorite texts. And this is the reason why I use biblical principles to supplement and to enhance my therapeutic knowledge. I believe I need to have as many tools in my toolbox to reach people. 
most people are reaching me to psychology today um, because of in my profile I say I've been happily married for 21 years I say my therapeutic approach is guided by spiritual principles because I believe that when we add spirituality to everything we're doing we have the cap capabilities of giving people the the understanding of what it means to be be resilient the spark what needs to be lit in everyone's heart so the resilient processes of of um, determination and endurance and protective factors and, and the willingness to be solution focused and sitting down and working out your problems and real lives the bigger picture of sustaining the family working through the family and allowing love the greatest emotion to elicit change guide that um the couple and the individual into solution focused behavior this is my favorite text and once again i'm reading from the king james version the lord god have given gary ingram the tongue of the learned the tongue of the learned basically means that in order to be morally astute you have to give every faculty of your person to jesus so the lord god have given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. In other words, I need to have as many tools in my toolbox to reach someone who's in despair. So in other words, the Lord slows me down. In counseling, we have a term called self of the therapist, where you put yourself aside and you focus entirely on the well-being of the counselee. This is no difference in the Bible says, Whoever Jesus says, whoever shall come after me, pick up your course, die daily, and follow me. So in other words, you want to esteem others more so than you esteem yourself. And let me continue to, to move on. So I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He just wakes me, waking me up morning by morning. He wakes my ear to hear to learn. I came to realize that if I take all this knowledge that he has given me and keep myself and my family I would not get new knowledge one of the reasons why I have a whole lot of different perspectives I have a whole lot of videos because the more I share the more knowledge you give to me right so I want to end this um in this video let me slow myself down because sometimes I get too excited <laughs> okay and to once again to lift you on high to help you realize that you are special you are wonderfully made the solution to your problems is in you even before you had the problem if you go to genesis chapter one and it tells you the sequence between night and day it was light the light came from god and it was and then the sequence of day was it was nighttime daytime so you put that together light day light that that basically means that the answer to your problem was in you even before you had the problem every problem that you have is given to you not to break you but to make you is given to you to help you build up in these four areas of life, right? These circumstances are object oh, of expansion to, to help you to develop resiliency, protective factors to endure, to persevere, to be determined, to be refreshed, for reformation, for revitalization, to be reconnected to the Lord, to your family, not allowing your Past to overcome you, but allowing your past to be paved of object lesson so you can understand where you are today and where you are going. So I want to lift you on high. Whether you are single, whether you're married, whether you're divorced, whether you are youngster or oldster or, or old person, I want you to realize that you are wonderfully made and you are called to have dominion over life issues. Life issues was not made to have dominion over you. So remember, slow yourself down, right? And remember, you have came this far. Remember how you was able to resolve conflicts inside the past. Think about that and focus on the three theme prescription that was given by God to solve any problems. I love this and this is what I practice. More unselfish love, more rest, and more joy. I love being a person i tried that this pair before and it doesn't work so i try to be as joyful and happy and um 
and having a good time in everything I do. Because some days I have stressful days that I gotta remember joy comes in the morning. I can be having a difficult day, but joy is coming in the morning. I may have um, many, many clients that I can't handle, but joy comes in the morning. I may have car problems, but joy comes in the morning. I may have more problems at my job than I can't handle, but joy comes in the morning. I did not have lunch today when I was working. Guess what? Joy comes inside the morning. And I have to always remember, always remember, always remember, there is someone who is always praying for you as someone is praying for me. I always say, when we are still, Jesus is moving for us. And when we are moving, he is still. Now, to hit you off with the car perspective, right? On the side of the car, the side view mirrors, those are two angels guiding you to your destination, similar to your two ears. They're guiding you to your destination, designed to eliminate any distractions that's preventing you from going forward. We should always be going forward with everything we have to do. Look at your circle of life. You need to eliminate any person or any circumstance that's preventing you from going forward. So once again, I want to lift up all my subscribers, let, let you know that I'm praying for you. I pray these videos will take you to greater height where you can take ownership of your relationship. It's time to stop, stop um, blaming or shaming or deflecting. Take ownership of yourself in your situation and realize it was love that brought you um, together with your, with your significant other. And let love be the theme to help you to overcome whatever issues you're going through. So once again, I hit you off with Isaiah um, chapter 8, verse 20, right? And it says, to, to the law, Ten Commandments, and to the testimony, Jesus' life, if they speak not according to this word, the Bible is because there is no light in them. So if you want to be morally astute, you have to do these three, three things, and that is Bible. And I'll give you one last text. One last text. I'm going to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16. And once again, I'm reading from the King James Version, and the Bible says this. I love this text. Let me slow down for this. Take a deep breath. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For by doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. So Paul is telling us, telling us, he's telling us Timothy, He's telling you to examine yourself. See where you came from. See where you are today and see where you are going. Be responsible, dedicated to not only you, to everyone who you come in contact with. Esteem others more so than you esteem yourself. God already is going to take care of you. But he said, Jesus said, the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. So who is going to stand up and do the required work to lead everyone to a proper relationship with Jesus. I'm standing up in my role as an ambassador. I'm an ambassador for Christ in the role as a marital family counselor. I'm an ambassador for Christ in the role as a supervisor at my job with Child Protective Services in the Eastern part of the United States. I am an ambassador as a role in the role of a husband. Um, to my wife, I am an ambassador as an ordained elder in my church, doing the work that Jesus required me to do. I am an ambassador as a friend. I'm an ambassador as a neighbor. And I have to always remind myself, the greatest person who I can change is the person I see in the mirror. And if he, if he can change, I can, I can go by the Spirit and change you. Not by my mind or my power, but by God's spirit, I can enact change in me and in you. Right, once again, I get too excited. I love it. I, I just get so excited when I'm doing this. Once again, my name is Dr. And I'm lifting on high for subscribing to my channel. Please leave your comments. Share, share it with others. You know, and remember, remix it like a song. Make it your own, right? Live in it. Remember, you are and you are striving for perfection.
for excellence. Have a great evening.